So, in that sense, there's nothing to challenge, there's nothing to confront, there's nothing to defend. And I've just watched over the years, with, even with A Course in Miracles, as it seemed to go through its uh, copyright things and copyright controversies and different things, it's just been this soft, gentle watching, knowing that there's nothing to fix or change, that nobody's really wrong. It's just the playing out of the script, and it's a very peaceful sense of watching, but there's no sense of fixing or changing anything. And that's what I would like to talk with you about in the coming days. Um, because to me, this experience I'm describing to you is most practical. A lot of times people can say, it, sometimes these things sound kind of high and mighty, or they sound glorious, but they don't seem very practical when it comes down to day-to-day -to -day decisions, day-to-day -day decision making. And what I want to talk with you about and really join together with you in is, is joining in the willingness to just let go of every belief, every scrap in the mind where there seems to be the slightest bit of controversy or conflict or ill at ease feelings. Just to subtly get in touch with what those are and to be willing to let them go. And to really see that there's no cost in releasing these feelings. It's not really like something terrible is going to happen to you if you quit judging or if you, if you quit um, discriminating. If you, if you quit trying to pick at things, it's not like something will, will be lost. I find in my life that, that as I've gone on this journey deeper and deeper, where I had anticipated a, a sacrifice of some kind, it's just like getting up close to it and going, that was nothing at all. I can laugh, like I can't believe I was so afraid of, of looking at that. I can't believe that I pushed that down for so long. I should, you know, you, you have the feeling like, wow, just let it all come up. And I think too, when I talk about trust, it's not so much that you have to develop more trust. Because a lot of times people think, I just need more faith and more trust. But it's just that, that the power of our mind is, is, is enormous. And when you have invested that power in a false belief system, it's more that you have to unplug from it, or divest from the ego, instead of get more trust. And that's just another ego trip, you know, when the ego is telling you, you're not trusting enough. You're, you're not, you don't have enough faith. That's just another kind of a push from the ego, that you're not good enough, that you need to be better. And it's not so much that we have to be better at anything, we just have to e expose the ego and pull all of our faith and trust away from it. And see that the spirit is worthy of our trust. That our guidance, that small still voice inside that's guiding us, is extremely worthy of our trust. And if we follow it, it brings states of un unlimited happiness and, and freedom. And more than anything, that's what I, I want to convey to you. I have really dedicated my life to living the experience of the Course of, of Enlightenment, to actually living it. I went to one of these big conferences back in 1992, and at that point I had effectively memorized the Course of Miracles. I would show up at groups and I would start speaking passages, whole paragraphs, verbatim, and even with quoting page numbers. And I was uh, introduced at this conference uh, in 1992 as a walking Course in Miracles encyclopedia. And uh, I don't know, I didn't like the ring of that somehow. <laughs> you see that as an epitaph on your, your gravestone. Here lies a Course in Miracles walking Encyclopedia. This doesn't, doesn't ring very 
good for me. So that was actually a good moment in my life in 1992 because from that point on I swore not to be an encyclopedia, but to really get into the core of the experience and to really feel it and extend it and radiate it. And so that's been my devotion. And as I was saying last night, I, I feel very honored, like Gary was saying, of being so fortunate to really be able to meet people in a very close and direct and intimate way, where you really feel that deep heart connection, like you've known them forever. That's, to me, what this is all about. The words, well, they'll, they come and they go. Uh, the, the books, for years I really, I just traveled around and I really had the experience that the Course was such a great, exquisite tool for me that I could not even imagine writing a book about it, and I, and actually I didn't. I mean, I just continued to travel and speak and people started transcribing these words. They made the book. <laughs> uh, so, so that's kind of fun for me because I've always thought, you know, this is just an experience and anything that gets used, I'm all for it. But, um, the idea of trying to put things down in form. I like to show movies, I use a lot of music, we do experiential exercises. Somebody was telling me, we had people who were, we had to do an angel bath last year outside, it was very much fun and everything. I'm really into those kind of things and yet I've also been open to answering thousands and thousands of emails and that's where a lot of these uh, writings that, get out, that come out into books come from is just from emails and not from uh, me trying to sit down and, and put something down into a book. And I've loved it. I haven't regretted one moment of it. Um, I even take the time occasionally to answer yes on Facebook and MySpace, all those funny little social networking gadgets that they have nowadays. Um, I just feel like whenever I have the opportunity and somebody writes a sincere question that that's just an, an opportunity to extend to myself and that's how we keep it in awareness is by giving it away. So to me it's, it's just very precious. So last night we talked a little bit about um, some topics. Good morning on Alisa. And um, basically that's what I plan to do on these days coming up in these sessions and also in the shared uh, question and answer sessions with Gary, is just make myself fully available to connect with you where your practice is. Where your spiritual practice is, seems to be flowing and working, and also if you have points where you feel like there's stuck points. Uh, a woman just wrote an email to me this morning in the early morning hours and just was saying she, she feels kind of a flatness uh, she went through a period where she was feeling a lot of joy, but now things are starting to feel kind of flat and meaningless. Like, kind of like, what is the point? It's more feeling more like a yada, 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 yada. And, and it's like, I don't know what's going on down there in my mind, she said, but, but when I feel this flatness, it doesn't, I don't feel that intense joy, so I really think that there must be something that I need to get in touch with, that I'm not aware of. And so, that's what I would like to use as a context for our gathering, if there's something that, that you feel like... It doesn't really matter what the emotion is, but if you're not feeling a sense of supreme joy and happiness, then that's a good starting point to just say, check. Uh, okay, I really want to take note of what's going on in my awareness, in my consciousness, because, because my state of mind is important to me because I am worthy of the peace and the joy and the happiness. I am worthy of true freedom. Not the freedom like we talk about living in a free country or financial freedom or those things, but I mean true freedom of mind, like Morpheus talks about in the, the Matrix. I'm trying to free your mind. <laughs> 